presence of a quorum, I am calling the Committee on Outreach, Communications, and Appointments to order at 9.34 a.m. Uh, and so we have a packet posted. I posted it uh, quite a while ago to give you an opportunity to look at that long process that we'll come to. Um, looking at the agenda, um, the first two things on it both have to do with planning board um, appointments slash reappointments. So as a reminder, because it feels like forever ago, the last time we met, we looked at what the current pool was. And as a committee, um, we made a decision that at that point, the pool was not sufficient to proceed uh, to interviews and that we would use the time between the last meeting and this meeting to hopefully engage in a little bit more recruitment uh, to try to expand the pool. Um, I know that I did my best to do that homework. I think I reached out to no fewer than eight or nine people. Um, I unfortunately have to report today uh, that the pool that you saw last time is the same as the pool you saw list this you will you would see this time with one exception um which is uh that at our last meeting i informed you that we had uh three members of the planning board whose terms were expiring um and we were curious in their interest in reappointment um and because this is a reappointment thing where you know we will talk about these publicly um so we know that Michael Bertwistle is interested in reappointment. When we last met, I informed you that David Levenstein had informed us that he is not interested in being reappointed. Um, I can also now inform you uh, at the time we had not gotten a clear answer from Christine Gray Mullen. We do now have a clear answer. She is not interested in reappointment. So what that means for us is that there are three seats um, that are up for appointment. Um, one of the incumbent members is interested, the other two are not. The pool looks the exact same as it did last time. So that being said, given that last time we talked about the pool, we made the decision that it was not sufficient to proceed to interviews my assumption, and correct me if anyone disagrees with me, but my assumption is probably we feel the same way since there has been no change. So the conversation, so if you looked at um, the agenda, the first two items were a discussion of the sufficiency of the pool and then the development of interview questions. Um, what I wanna have a conversation about really is what you wanna do. Um, because we're in uh, an unfortunate situation of um, time is running short, um, both for this committee um, and also for um, those current terms, which expire June 30th. I will say, however, um, that the policy is that if a term expires, but there is no uh, replacement, essentially that person just rolls over and continues to serve until they are replaced or leave. So they wouldn't necessarily be appointed to a new term, um, but they're not kicked out on June 30th if there's no one who's willing, waiting to take that seat over. I have, I have spoken to, um, to David and to Christine. Both are amenable to serving a couple months beyond June 30th um, if we don't have anyone to replace them because um, I think they do recognize that a planning board of five is, um, is, is very difficult, um, especially in the summer when, as we all know, um, people are less reliably here, although that might be different this summer due to COVID. Um, they're not willing to serve, from my understanding, beyond the summer. Um, so what that means for us is we have a couple options as I see it, and I, and I, and I really wanna use this time to just hear your thoughts and opinions on this. So the, the first option is 
um, that we do what we did last time and try to meet again as OCA in two weeks and redouble our efforts on recruitment. I, I'm a little skeptical about that because I know that I worked really, really hard over the past couple of weeks um, on the phone with people, um, really trying to convince them that this was something that they should do and was really unsuccessful in that, um, which I don't know, perhaps I'm not as persuasive as I hope I am, but um, I'm not necessarily convinced that I could be more successful if given two more weeks, um, but perhaps if you do, that could be one option is we just come back in two weeks and, and say, hopefully we have a pool by then. Um, and then we have to very quickly act to do interviews. Um, a second option is we act just on consideration of reappointment of Michael. Um, and so we would, uh, per our process, have to do an interview and all of that, um, just to deal with that reappointment if we want to reappoint um, and then leave the other two. Uh, and then the third option I see, which is an option I'm not a big fan of, but recognize might be a ra uh, the most rational option is for us to say, we can't take any action at this time ask Christine and Michael, I mean, not, sorry, ask Christine and David and Michael technically, because we wouldn't be reappointing him yet, to serve through the summer. And then of course, this responsibility transfers over to the CRC um, and say to CRC, we weren't able to do this, good luck, um, balls in your court now. Um, and, I, I do feel slightly more confident in that because um, Sarah and I serve on CRC. Um, and so we wouldn't be handing it to a committee that's never had to do this. Um, I think the, the one benefit of Sarah and I being there is, um, you know, we, we have that sort of background of how this works. Um, so those are what I see as the three options. I'm sure there are more. Um, but I want to just, I, I honestly just want to have a conversation with you all about what you think we should do, um, because we are in a very difficult position right now. So I will open the floor. Please raise your hands if you have thoughts, um, and hopefully we can come to some type of agreement about what our path forward is. Floor is open. Okay. I mean, essentially, I had, okay, Alyssa, thank you. Okay, folks, you had your chance. Here I am. <laughs> um, given the options you just gave us, given the lengthy and really frustrating amount of outreach you've tried to do, I agree that I don't think anything magical is going to happen in the next two weeks. So given that, I think the appropriate tweak to what you just suggested is to have us go ahead and submit to council our recommendation that we, re that we reappoint, in contrast to our normal process, all three of them, Michael, Christine, and David, through, I don't know, August 31st, September 30th, whatever you think they might agree to. And that way they are actually appointed. The only thing that makes me concerned about what you said earlier, which is absolutely a legal standard that if until replaced, except we have had people who were not reappointed, who received letters who said, you're not being reappointed. Thank you very much for your service. And those people did not continue. So it's not like 100% true that people continue because there, were, there are circumstances where people are thanked for their service and the seat is left vacant. So that has happened in the past. So given that we don't want any confusion over this and given how much we appreciate that they're continuing to serve and given that there's always the legal question later as to whether or not somebody really should have still been serving, like if somebody gets sued over this next little time period, it seems most effective to 
go ahead and reappoint them for a short period of time, which I know feels a little funny. I know we just did it with finance committee, but it, and it feels a little odd, but if they could come to an agreement as to how long that period is, whether it like through Labor Day or something, then that makes it clear that we really appreciate the three of them. We really want them serving through the through the summer. Hopefully they can show up for the meetings that need to be done. And then we move on to the next process. It feels really weird to put Michael in the position of having to interview for reappointment when the others don't, right? And so they're all willing to help us out this way. So let's recognize that and just have a short-term appointment. And then what CRC has to deal with is that they've got three appoint reappointments coming up, two of which have already said no. Maybe they'll change their minds. Hey, anything could happen. Um, and and this and the story continues. But I think suggesting putting forth to, to town council where we're at and suggesting that we reappoint them just as we in fact just did with finance committee would be the thing to do. It's not, you know, this is not a solution, but it's a short term application of where we're at. Any other thoughts on any of the suggestions, including what Alyssa just put forth? George. Just a question for Alyssa. This this would be without interviews. We would just reappoint for a short, right? Okay. Yeah. Yep. Super weird, right? Because we just went through this I'm incredibly elaborate you. process. George did set the precedent to do that for a very short term. Yeah. But final. Yeah. George is the groundbreaker. Yes. <laughs> right. Not happy, I think, for any of us. It's disappointing. It's discouraging. Um, there's nothing happy about it, but I think Alyssa's suggestion might be the uh, the least unhappy option. Um, I don't know what do others think. Darcy, um, I I have no problems with what Alyssa is suggesting. It seems like a good idea. Provide, you know, like I think it would I think it would be preferable for the three people in question so that they they are clear about their status. And yeah, so yeah, I agree. Uh, Sarah, how do you feel? So I feel a little loath to do this this way, but it, it seems like it makes the most sense. It seems like it makes the most sense. And then, like you said, I do feel better that two members of OCA are going to be working on this later on. So. It seems like the best solution to me. Okay. I mean, okay. <laughs> it's not great, but it's the best solution. Yeah. Okay. Um, so then I'm hearing sort of consensus for um, this idea of recommending just a very short term appointment um, for all of the members just to buy some time over the summer um and you know I, I i of course worry that crc will find itself having this exact same conversation at the end of the summer because i you know summer the a great time to recruit people at <laughs> amherst but um I, I do think that we're sort of out of options so um in that case um does any i i, I can offer a motion on this does anyone else have any other comments on this Okay, so then I will move that Oka recommend the town council appoint Michael Burtwistle, David Levenstein, and Christine Gray Mullen to the planning board for terms expiring August 30th, 2020. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Any further discussion or anything you want to make sure is included in the report about this? George? Why August 30? Is there uh, I, mean, I picked the end of summer. Right. Do you have a date you'd prefer? Uh, to amend the motion? August 31st. 
I forgot there were 31 days in <laughs> August. Uh, that's what I was wondering. Was there something sacred about August 31? But uh, no, I just I forgot that's that. Okay. That's, all right. I that's right. All right. So I would suggest August 31st. Um, but I'll it doesn't, that it doesn't really matter. Amendment. How about that? Do you agree to that, Sarah? That friendly amendment? Okay, friendly amendment August 31st because I don't remember my basic months of the year. Um, cool. <laughs> Uh, any any further uh, comments? All right, then I will call the question. Uh, Alyssa Brewer. Aye. Darcy Dumont. Aye. Evan Ross says aye. George Ryan. Aye. And Sarah Schwartz. Aye. Okay, so that is unanimous, and so. I will put that in a report um, and get it to council to be voted on for our June 15th meeting, hopefully. Okay, um, so that's not how I was hoping to end our appointing authority, but we can only operate within what, we're, what we get. So. Um, so that means we're not going to be doing development of interview questions because we won't be holding interviews in the near future and certainly uh, what we need on the planning board. Um, I, so the, the other thing, sorry, I meant to, I meant to um, say this before, but um, for the report, um, we did technically pass selection guidance. Um, and so I, I do want to make clear that we're going to hand that selection guidance off to CRC. Um, I don't personally feel that they have to use that exact selection guidance. If they are interviewing in August, they can modify it. Um, and, and the reason for that is that selection guide, you know, conditions might change. And also that selection guidance was developed before knowing that Christine was stepping off. Um, and so things might change. So I am going to hand that over to CRC, but um, my expectation is that even though we adopted that, they are free to also modify it. Um, okay, so then the only other thing on our agenda, oh, there's two more things. Uh, sorry, Alyssa. Well, free to modify it if they want me to vote against their recommendations at town council. Let's, mm -hmm. let, let, let's I mean, Let's be clear here. We yeah. worked really hard to get to this point. I know that you and Sarah will represent that case, but just when we're speaking of this to the public, this is not just, yeah, this is what we did, but do whatever you want. Um, no, there's reasons. And so if they change things, it should be exactly as you said, in response to conditions, not because, you know, nah, we just want to do this a completely different way because that would require additional justification on their part as opposed to continuing down the path we've been struggling with for a couple of years now. So we know you'll represent our uh, views here, but I just would like to make sure that the report to the CRC doesn't say, obviously you're free to do whatever you want. I think that would um, be un unspoken at best. Okay, that, and that's why I wanted to bring it up. I wanted to make sure I had all your thoughts on that before I um, transferred this over to CRC. Okay, um, so the next thing on our agenda is um, somewhat relatedly that OCA process document um, that we talked about last time. Uh, the idea being that this would be OCA's sort of final product to the council, um, which is when we're dealing with appointment recommendations, here's the process that we worked um, and tested and refined uh, to do that. Um, and this would be what would be given to CRC uh, to help them in this process, um, even in the absence of Sarah and I's presence. So um, when we were last here, uh, we took a look at this document. Um, the, the two major things that I took away from that conversation about what to change, um, one was a request that I add a section about um, writing vacancy notices and also include in the uh, appendices uh, an example vacancy notice. So I have added that. And then the second thing um, that was requested was that I um, 
add the committee handouts. Um, and so I kind of sort of did that. It's Appendix G. Um, I didn't add the handouts themselves. I added the links to the handouts. Um, I'm happy to add the handouts themselves. I couldn't find Word versions of them and I was having trouble getting the PDF versions into one document. Um, so I can add the actual things because I think I figured that out. But for now, I just put the links. Um, but the one thing I noticed when I was putting the links in um, is I could find very clearly on the planning boards page the link and I could find very clearly on the ZBA's page the link to the handout. Um, but I could not find on um, anywhere on the finance committee's web page the handout that we developed. Um, and so I don't know if I was just missing that, um, but I could not, uh, I could not find it. Um, so I could go back into our, George? Um, let's you and I talk uh, at some other point about how to, I had a, I have a copy of it. Um, and I, right now I'm not sure I can figure out how I tracked it down. I think I actually tracked it down off the OCA site. Yeah, that's um, it. So yeah. I, I actually I have it. You have it, right? But I have no it, and it's and I got it from our packet from back right. when we finance committee appointments. Right. Um, but if I was going to set this up with links to the committee handouts, which I actually don't think I should do, I think I should just put the committee handouts right in. Um, but if I did do links, I actually don't see that handout on the the website, and so. Um, so yeah, I don't need the handout, but I, I, I guess I am curious um, if anyone knows if it is actually available to the public anywhere, because I didn't see it. Uh, Maybe Alyssa, I should. George. Or Alyssa. Alyssa. I was just going to say, I doubt that it is. I mean, that, that was a, a problem we had actually with both planning board and ZBA when we first developed the handout too, is where does it go after we create, after we created it, they made sure it was technically accurate. And then it's it's featured as you indicated. It it's one place on the planning board site. It's in another place on the ZBA site. And I doubt that finance committee ever thought about putting it anywhere because it just wasn't part of. It, it's not part of that mindset, right? And so similarly to like literally every other committee we have, most of them don't have their actual charge documents, which a charge is different than a committee handout, right? But in a similar vein most the vast majority of our committees do not have the actual charge document that was ever voted by the appointing authority they have uh summaries and copy and paste and things like that it's just a structural thing and so i think it's just a matter of if you're sure it's the one we used just ask the finance committee to put it someplace so the public can always see it as the public is digging into the finance committee stuff just as the zba one needed to be updated to show that we actually did change the zoning bylaw associated with CBA. So it's just it's just a follow through kind of thing. And so I really appreciate that you're going to find a way to put the actual charges in, not only because of that difficulty in finding it, you could mention that it's usually on the website. But the other part is because we want to show people what the most recent document was that we used, because there is links do get broken and yeah. versions do get changed. And so finding a way to insert it, however, you will do that is magically on our behalf. We appreciate that. Yeah, and, and, and that was sort of my, I, I had a really boring internal debate with myself about putting the actual handout in this document versus the links. And the risk with the link, of course, is that links can get broken very easily once they're moved. The risk with putting the handout in is if it, the link does stay static every time the document's updated, you know, that the process document would always link to the most up-to-date committee handout because if it gets changed, then the, our doc, our process document has an outdated one. Um, but I think, I think you're right. The actual document is probably better because links are messy. Um, so anyways, um, so I made the, the changes that were requested at our last meeting. Um, and I guess I have, um, I want to hear from you all about whether this document looks ready for us to send to the council. Um, if there's more things you want to see changed in it, 
Um, if there's things that you noticed on another read are missing. Um, thoughts? Alyssa, is this a new hand or a residual hand? Okay, thank you. Uh, any thoughts on, on this document? Things you want to see changed, added, removed? Errors? I don't know. No? George? I think it's it's ready for prime time. I think that it's a, a wonderful gift to uh, the council and to CRC and to all the other bodies that will have to do this. Um, I think it's a fitting um, sort of summation of a long period of hard work by uh, many people on this committee. So um, I personally think it's ready to go. Um, I don't know how the others feel, but I think it also is a a real a testament to uh, how hard we've worked and uh, what we've gone through. And I hope it gets used well. Okay, thank you, George. Uh, other, other comments, thoughts, changes on this document? Do we feel like we are ready to vote to send this, uh, Darcy? I just would say that I appreciate all the work you put into it, Evan. You you are, you know, you just have an incredible work ethic, <laughs> and uh, you know it's it is complete and extensive. And you know, I obviously am going to have to vote against it because I voted against a lot of pieces of it as they came along, and it it. I just, you know, I'm disappointed that our final product is not as transparent, it doesn't present a tran as transparent a process as I would like to hand to CRC. Um, so I don't have to go into that because I've talked about it a lot in the past, but I do appreciate all the work you put into having a process to hand to another committee. Well, thank you, Darcy. Um, being single during quarantine has definitely <laughs> helped that work ethic it produced a lot of, a lot of work that might not otherwise have been. <laughs> I get that totally. <laughs> um, okay, so if we're if we feel ready, um, then I think we can move this to the council. Um, so I can make that motion, um, which is. I move to submit to the town council the process to recommend appointments to multiple member bodies appointed by the town council developed by the outreach appointments and communication committee. Do I have a second? I can second that. Okay. Any further discussion? Okay. Then I will call the question and we will start this time with Darcy Duma. No. Evan Ross is yes. George Ryan. Yes. Sarah Schwartz. Yes. And Alyssa Brewer. Yes. Okay. So that is four in favor, one opposed. And then uh, Darcy, for the sake of the report, your opposition your, your, your vote is because of your, the issues you've raised with the process itself, correct? Yes, transparency in general. Okay. Okay, so the only other thing we actually have on our agenda today are minutes. Um, and we do have um, somewhat of a backlog of minutes because our last several meetings have been fairly lengthy. And so we have jettisoned our consideration of um, minutes. Uh, so our, all of our minutes are in our minutes folder. So just give me a minute to get there. Um, so we have uh, minutes for March 30th, April 13th, and April 27th, which are our regular meetings. Um, and then we have 
minutes for our April 16th special meetings, one of which was interviews and one of which was deliberation. Um, and I apologize, this is on me. It doesn't look like I have our May meeting uh, in here. So you didn't get a chance to see those and that is 100% on me. I thought I had done that. Um, so I guess we'll, we'll start with, with these minutes here. Um, did anyone have any, no one's contacted me with any, any edits or changes that were needed. Um, did, were people given it, did people get a chance to, to look at these? The, I, I will admit, um, I will, I will say that the minutes from April 27th are still a little bit drafty. Um, I had intended to go through and edit them and then uh, you know, I'm sorry, it's just been very busy and I did not get a chance to um, do that. Um, and so we, you know, of course, can approve them even though, I, I've read through them and they're correct. They're just the formatting is not consistent with what we usually do. So if, if people don't really care about that, then we can approve it. Um, the other option I was going to suggest is um, for the April 27th and the, and the May minutes is, um, well, I was, I, let me say this, for the March 30th, April 13th and April 16th minutes, we could vote as a committee to approve for the April 27th and then the May minutes um, we, and we could do, and for the minutes for this meeting, um, we could do what we do for, what we used to do, which is just, um, um, I, I could approve them as, as chair, or you know, I could send them out and say, if you have any edits, send them to me by this date. Because my thought is, given we're now sending planning board to CRC, we are done with ZBA and we're done with this process, this committee likely won't meet again. Um, and so how do you guys wanna do minutes? I mean, I, I think my personal preference is to vote on the ones that I feel like are ready to go, which are not the April 27th. And then for April 27th, May, I think it was May 18th. And um, today's minutes, I could just send them out and say, if you have it, send them back to me, I'll clean them up and then we'll just get them on online as we did in the past. Thoughts on this? So let me understand what you just said, Evan. I'm not completely clear. Uh, that, that we'll still have a period of time to look at the minutes and get back to you if we want to make any changes. And if not, then you'll approve them. Yeah, I think that that's what I, because I, I don't, I don't intend to call this committee back to me unless there's some pressing thing that pops up all of a sudden. Um, and so my thought is, um, it, it, let me ask, have, did people get a chance to look at the April 27th minutes? Because they're, they're just, they're, they're correct. I mean, I read through them, but they're very, they, they, the format's just not there yet. And so I don't, I don't, I don't really care to some extent, but I also do um, because I'm, that's who I am as a person. Um, so um, my preference would be to hold off on those. And then because you haven't even looked at the main ones, but I would want to make sure you had a chance to look at them and give me any feedback beforehand. So yes, that's what I'm suggesting, Darcy. Just for the April 27th? No, April 27th, the May minutes that aren't even in the folder yet. And then um, one, I would send all three out once I got the minutes for today's meeting. That sounds reasonable to me. Okay. Any other thoughts on this? Okay, are we okay with doing the March 30th, April 13th, and April 16th minutes as a vote today? Okay, cool. So, so I feel like a lot of things are more complicated than they need to be today, but um, we're, we're all doing our best. I see a hand from Melissa. I can helpfully muck things up at this point. I knew there was something, I knew there was something that was bugging me about the amazing report you wrote on our behalf. And when I was looking for it, I came up with a second thing. So that's why I need to stop reading the report because it's terrific and it stands alone and we just voted on it. I want to make two quick mentions. One that you can cover because you and Sarah are going to be there at CRC and the other I think is just a quick add on. 
when you wrote, a, you wrote so many examples in here, which was amazing. You wrote how to say yes to someone. You didn't give an example of how to say no, thank you. We interviewed you, but we're not bringing your name forward. And because that's such an awkward conversation, you might want to consider, I mean, even though I'm not asking you to change page 14 at this point, you might want to consider going ahead and offering that up before you get asked for it because you had to use it, right? I mean, that's the reality. We've made a point in this committee of putting that burden on our chairs of insisting that we not just let something fade off into obscurity and they don't know what happened. They get told up front before the whole world knows who the other people are. So I think that's, I know you said that that's done. I think showing people how it's done is because it was actually a little bit, right? It's a little bit hard to write that email. The other part that I think you could just add as a quick thing that again is similar to our conversation about the handouts is I think there should be a copy of the current CAF in here because I think this report should count as this was the process, right? I mean, even though, in fact, we just changed the CIF five minutes ago, um, this is the whole thing. And so that when people look back at this, what did that CAF say? It only has those things, but that's just a suggestion for additional appendix. You can just add it once you're at CRC. I just, that was the one, the CAF part was the one that was bugging me that I knew I'd forgotten to mention to you weeks ago. So thanks for your patience on that. Do we want, does, do, do members of this committee agree with Alyssa that it would be useful to add to an appendix the CAF and then also uh, an example of what the email um, telling people they're not being reappointed is? Sarah? Yeah, I actually would, Evan, just because sometimes, if, like the first time you go through it as a chair, I think you and I both did it different ways. So I think maybe saying, and then, so like saying like email someone by such and such a date before you, it's important that somebody knows to do it before you tell everybody else. Yes. Like, so an example of an email and yeah. then what it says and then the timing of it, because I think that's easy to mess up and it really hurts people if we do it the wrong way. So it would help a chair or whoever's going to do it. Okay. Darcy? Uh, yes, as long as we're throwing in advice about the report after the fa after we've already voted on it, um, it does occur to me that since we promised uh, the council that they would all get a spreadsheet of, you know, uh, people who have applied over the last three years, maybe in the advice to the chairs, put in, you know, annually, um, make sure that the the counselors get this spreadsheet from Angela Mills or whoever is going to give it to them. And um, that reminds me that we would like to have that now too. <laughs> so, reach out to Angela, who's on this call actually um, later today about a couple things around that. Okay. Um, great. We were in mid so. Thank you for all of that, and I will I will make sure to, to put those things in. I don't think that changes anyone's vote on the report. Okay, um, so we were talking about minutes, um, <laughs> and so we were looking at um, 3.30, 4.13, and the two special meetings on 4.16. Um, so I am going to move to approve the minutes for March 30th, 2020, April 13th, 2020, April 16th, 2020 interviews, and April 16th, 2020 deliberation. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Are there any further comments on minutes? Okay. Then I will call the question. We'll start with me. I vote yes. George? Yes. Sarah? Yes. Alyssa? Abstain. And Darcy? Abstain. Okay, so that is three in favor, zero against, and two abstentions. Okay, and so as I mentioned before, what I will do with um, the remainder, the remaining minutes is um, send them out to you with a, a date of please look these over and if you have feedback or, or edits, get them back and then 
um, I will make those edits and then they will be approved and on the website. Um, so that is our full agenda for today um, because that's all we have to do. Um, so that means, and this is, feels very strange to say, um, but given we have now voted to submit our recommended process uh, to the council for use by CRC and also by uh, the esteemed chair of the GOL committee, um, now that we have decided that we are not going to be moving forward on planning board appointments due to an insufficient pool, um, but we're able to, and I think, I, let, me, let me say this, I, there is a part of me um, that feels sort of down about ending without being able to complete our task on the planning board. I think that we can all agree that that doesn't feel good. Um, however, I will say that I have heard from multiple people who have been shocked that we were able to fill all seven seats on the zoning board of appeals. And so even though I feel like, um, you know, this is not the way we wanted to end things in that we were not able to accomplish what we needed to for planning board, uh, we were able to put a full bench of people on the Zoning Board of Appeals. And I think that that was also the result of some really intense recruitment efforts, because if you remember, we were in a very similar position in February when it came to the Zoning Board of Appeals of not being able to move forward because of insufficient pool. Um, and then we worked hard and we were able to fill all the seats um, with, with what I think are some really good people. And as we see that the 132 Northampton Road project is about to move um, forward to them. I think that um, we and the community can be very thankful that we were able to do that because um, having that uh, robust committee for, for this uh, is going to be important. Um, and I hope that everyone we appoint stays on the committee even after <laughs> um, this. And so um, what I wanted to say is just thank you to all of you. We've had um, a number of very long meetings, as you know. Um, we spent four months putting together, uh, well, actually, we should say this way. We spent four months putting together a process and then another four months overhauling that process and then another month refining that new process. And so I don't think there's um, any committee on the council that has worked so intensely intensely on process and setting up a structure to be successful going forward. And that has not always been uh, easy and it has at times been contentious and it hasn't been the sexy stuff that gets covered in the newspaper all that often. Um, and it's not the stuff that we're going to uh, be getting praised for, right? Because it's not, it's not stuff that a lot of people are interested in, but I think it's important work. Um, and I want to thank all of you for doing that work um, and being willing to have so many meetings and engaging in this um, iterative process uh, with us. So um, I'm ready to, even though we've never, ever, 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 ever had a meeting this short, um, I can't think of anything else to make y'all do. And so um, I don't know if anyone else has any thoughts or comments, um, but I am ready to adjourn the final meeting of OCA. Does anyone have anything else? Alyssa. Of course I do. I think Darcy does too, or maybe hers is a vestigial yeah, hand like mine was I, earlier. Your hand is residual. Um, is this committee has been so frustrating and so productive at the same time, right? Because you spoke it so well, but of course I have to add to it because that's what I do, is that we we not only developed a process like i'm gonna pick on some other committees for example that never used a process that they handed over to tso we developed a process 
we used it, we refined it, we said this part doesn't work so great. Oh my gosh, we didn't think of that. Okay, how's this other thing gonna work? We didn't all agree, but we figured it all out so that we all understood it and we applied it and we did our best to, uh, even though we didn't get a lot of press coverage, to say this is why we're doing what we're doing. And it got really hard sometimes with the town council in full to be able to say, do you not understand how many hours we've spent beating this around when they would ask a very innocent question about why we weren't doing something a different way. I think we should be really, really proud of the work we did together. And I think we owe a special thanks to Sarah and to Evan for having chaired us through that because we were all new to working together, right? And so now it's like, ah, you know, you guys are in CRC, the others of us are on TSO. It's like, it's a very different position we're in than we were when we had to develop such a complex process not having worked together before. So I think we deserve huge kudos. And I wanna again, thank Evan and Sarah in particular for their leadership and keeping us together as we got through this. I certainly appreciate staff support, but I, I feel bad that a committee that's worked this hard is, well, you know, I'm not happy this committee is dissolving. A committee that's worked this hard is just kind of fading away, but I prefer to try and think of it as we did amazing work and now others can learn from us and we can move on to other tasks. So thank you. Thank you, Alyssa. And, and yes, I also want to make sure, because you touched on it, that I think um, especially Angela, who I know is on this call, who um, has spent a lot of time working with me to collect all the CAF for all of our appointments and who also fielded, um, when I first started chairing and was a little new, some very last minute Thursday morning, oh my God, this needs to be posted in the next 15 minutes or we can't hold the meeting emails. Um, and who sat on the phone with me on New Year's Eve collecting community activity forms. So thank you so much, Angela. And also Athena, um, who especially during this COVID era where posting meetings is much more complicated, um, dealt with a, a pretty high volume of meeting requests when it came to um, April and the ZBA interviews. And so I think staff also deserves some, uh, uh, some gratitude. George. I just don't want it to end. This is so sad. Um, you know, I don't know what I'm going to do. Um, I want to echo Alyssa's uh, comments that we are much in debt to both Sarah and Evan. We've been uh, blessed with two strong chairs and uh, that it makes a lot of difference, makes all the difference, I think. Um, but uh, it's been a pleasure and a pain, but mostly a pleasure. And um, thank all of you for all that you've done. And uh, we'll see what happens in the next, uh, next iteration. <laughs> thank you, George. Darcy? I just want to say that I thought the high point of our actions and our relationship was the the zba interviews um and decision around that because i thought we that was a really good good day for us um and i also want to mention that or, or just ask that i think Alyssa looks like a religious icon with that gold halo around her head <laughs> so we definitely have to listen to her <laughs> Thank you, thank you, Darcy. And I agree that you know the. I, that's why, even though I feel sort of there's there's a part of me that's that feels upset that we're not being able to do the planning board thing. I, I think we should be really proud of that ZBA because we did something that is that Alyssa can tell us is impressive in filling every seat, um, and we also did it in a way that was really collaborative and worked together, and I think put together a really strong, balanced ZBA going forward. So I agree. Thank you. Okay, well then, if there are no further comments, I am going to adjourn us for the final time at 10.22 a.m. Thank you all. Thank you, Evan. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>